What's up guys, Truman here, welcome back to another video. So I am trapped once again in the workplace of doom. I was honestly planning on spending most of today doing my juice fast video, no, no, actually my juice fast video is coming out today, but my uh, top three skin, three skin healing tips, I was hoping to really bash that out tonight, but unfortunately I cannot because I'll be coming home and I'll be extremely tired, so I have to put that on the back bench, uh, but enough about that. So, slavery. I am black, if a few of you couldn't actually tell. <laughs> and now there's some people watching this like, really? Ah, yeah, this guy looks black as a But what I'm talking about is slavery. Now, I was always indoctrinated to think that men, not that men, uh, black people were perpetual victims. And as much as I'd love to go off on a tirade about how I think that black people need to actually pick up their, you know, a lot of them need to start accepting responsibility for the reality of their situation and stop killing each other and blaming the white man for everything. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the slavery that no one notices because it is everywhere. But before I want to do that, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever considered how strange it is that now it's easier than ever to get food, water, shelter, medicine? It's easier now than ever. So why is it then that we have people working nine hours a day, sometimes seven, eight, nine, day at the top, you know, ridiculous work hours just to stay alive? Now, you, we like to say, oh, it's the house prices, oh, it's the, oh, it's, um, you know, just the, just the way things are. And that those people that say that honestly drive me crazy. But honestly, I think that we never really truly abolished slavery. I'm not talking about the slave trade, which by the way, white people do get blamed for that a lot. But actually, if you look at the statistics, the Arabian slave trade was far worse than the Christian slave trade. White people also ended slavery. Also, no one noticed, no one mentions this, Jewish people owned the boats that the white people used for slavery. So the Jews were actually just as bad as anyone else on that, yet they don't get any sort of credit for it. But I'm not talking about that slavery. I'm talking about wage slavery. I'm talking about work slavery. We are the only civilization, we are the only species that quite literally has to beg and break our fingers to the bone just to eke out a, an existence, especially if you want to live in a first world country. Now I know that it's honestly about what your standards are, whether or not if it's okay if you want to live out in the countryside, if you want to live a minimalist life, which is perfectly fine. But if you want access to all of the amazing things that Western civilization has created, and obviously others did contribute to it too, you have to work insanely hard for it. Why? It's easy, we have robots, we have automation, we have technology, we have the internet, we have all this stuff. Why is it that we have to work so hard? Now, the reason why I talk about this is because day after day, I'm, I'm coming to the realization that my time is too valuable to be wasted here, too valuable to be wasted in retail. And I've always carried this idea in me that why is it that we have to work? And everyone says, oh, it's just life. It's just life. It's just life. It's just life. It's life. Forget about that one. It's just life. It's just the way we live. I got that from all my parents, teachers, um, friends. Oh, I work so hard. I have this, that, and the other. And of course they do. And of course my expect goes out to them if they've worked hard, if they've earned something. But no one ever asks, why do I have to? Because the, obvious, the answer is obvious. That's just the, what everyone else is doing. It's what everyone is doing. No one stops to think why. Now, let me ask another controversial question. Do you think, and this may sound seem a bit weird and I'm not pointing, pointing any fingers here, but maybe you haven't framed it in this way. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that we have gone from, in the space of about 50, 60 years, having one person being able to work and support a family, a large family with a house and everything else. One person to now two people having to work, both the man and the woman, both partners, whatever, gay, straight, whatever. Two people having to work in debt, having less time off than ever, and having less leisure time than ever. Why is it that in 60 years we have gone for that? Has Anyone ever asked himself that question? Most, most likely not. Most people think that, that that's just the way things are. I never understood, and I've, I, I honestly, I, I want to set up a poll if I, could, if I could ask people over a certain generation that were part of that single working parent family generation, not single parent family. Have ever asked them, ha, have they ever thought that it's kind of strange? Now, I actually have an answer for you. And uh, this is a bit of a microcosm answer because I do have an answer for why slavery is 
actually ubiquitous that you and I are slaves. I think that women entering the workforce was one of the worst things that happened. Now, this isn't pointing fingers at women and this is not the main issue. This is just one of the one of the chinks in the armor, one of the nails in the coffin to our freedom. Women were manipulated and brainwashed to think that the epitome of empowerment is to be as quote unquote good as a man, which basically meant you want to do all the hard work that, that men are doing in their field. Obviously women work, used to work hard for all these other roles that they would fill in the family and in society. But all of a sudden women were brainwashed to think, oh, if only we sweated blood in the coal mines, then we'd be equal. Oh, if only we had all the high paying executive jobs. Stupid. It was the wor one of the worst things to happen to Western civilization. Why? Because when women entered the workforce, the price of the value of labor halved. Why? Because you now have twice as many workers. This is why so many people are annoyed when they have lots of different migrants coming in. Because the more migrants come in, the more diluted the workplace goes. Guess what? Cost of labor goes down and down and down and down. Because that's okay. I've got 10 people applying for a job, so I can I can pick and choose whatever the hell I'm gonna pay you. Before I was paying my workers $15 an hour. And if you can remember, or if you ask some of the some of the older generation, they will tell you that literally you walk, you come out of school, you walk into a job. You walk straight out of school and straight into a job. Jobs were everywhere. And that was back when there were very few women in the workplace. Now, there are women in the workplace, jobs are nowhere. People are coming up with college degrees, Brain surgeons working in Tesco, brain surgeons working in Sainsbury's, any sort of, it's, it's silly. Why? Because the value of labor has halved. Why? Because there's twice as many people in the workforce. That is one of the reasons why I think we are working so hard for so little, but that's not the point. Um, that is not the point. That is just a video that requires a video on its own. What I really want to say is that slavery and serfdom, more importantly, master serf, never ended with the Enlightenment, never ended with the Industrial Revolution. Slavery simply expanded to encompass everyone. Now, instead of a local lord, it's your manager. Now, instead of the feudal lord, it's your landlord. Now, instead of your the king, it's the government. We've replaced balls and chains for nice cars and nice houses for loans, for golden chains that we are now, we now think are just the norm. We now think it's totally natural, it's totally normal for us to be in this kind of indentured slavery. And because of that, we are slowly like a frog boiling in water, getting sicker and tighter and having less and less things to do. We, I mean, I've been doing a lot of research into past civilizations and I've realized just how ridiculous it is. Like hunter-gatherer societies. People like to think, oh, hunter-gatherer societies, it was a harsh life. Oh, they were just, they were, they, they were busy all the time trying to survive. Bullshit. They hunted. And then when they had their hunt, what did they do? They relaxed. They took care of the village. They socialized. They maybe worked on some defenses or whatever. But for the most part, they relaxed. We have, we don't have any predators anymore. We don't. There are, we have no predators unless we wander into their territory unarmed. We have no predators other than other humans. But you know what I mean. No one's gonna club you to death in the streets if you're unless you're in. You know, I, I love it how I'm nitpicking. I'm slowly I, I, I nitpick my own arguments as I say them. <laughs> but yeah, you you, you you understand what I mean. I'd be great. At, I'd be great in a at a, at a debate. Just me and then get, saying a point and then just debating myself when, when my opposition is sitting there like I don't have to do anything uh, yeah no but we don't have any predators out there we don't have to do that yet yeah, we're working nine to five and there are people out there who will stand there and, and, and who will tell you this is just the way things are those people they don't understand how, just how good they have people think oh just how great we have it now no you had it a lot better back then you had it a lot better back then because there was a lot less stress there was a lot less, there was a lot more job opportunities. Yes, there's a lot of opportunities now when it comes to technology. But back then, there, are, there was a lot more guaranteed work. And there was a lot less work to do. A less, lot less work to be done to have a comfortable standard of living. Now, especially if you live in the city, because I know that...